All right, what's up guys? This is gonna be a complete guide on how to iterate and read metrics properly on your Facebook ads so that you can scale your brand too, like we did for this brand that we scaled to $50,000 in seven days. Okay, it's a really cool case study and I'm gonna give you the exact full process, our SOP, in fact, that we use in-house to scale brands like this and it's a very logical, repeatable process and I promise you one thing which I can promise you, guarantee, going out of this video, it's not gonna be just run better ads, rip more content, and run more cow data ripped videos and whatnot. Okay, so um, just before we actually launch, right, just a couple important steps. Obviously, we have the research, creative strategist job, we have the ideation, the ideation turns into a brief, right? And then obviously there comes a hook test in somewhere in between this process. So ideally, you wanna do this every once in a while that you're introducing new concepts into your account, basically just image ads that look like this, hook one, hook two, hook three, hook four, and then you actually you know, write hooks with it and then you isolate them, meaning you test with no primary text, no headline, no description, call to action is learn more, and all you do is you'll look for the best click-through rates, okay? So when you've done this hook test and you have your briefs ready, right, based off of research and an ideation of the creative strategist, that brief turns into a batch, and then you launch, okay? So this is kind of how the pre-launch phase looks like before we actually even touch anything when it comes to normal creative testing campaign inside of the ad account. And now that we have launched everything, there's a hundred things that can go wrong and that will go wrong. And the mindset that you need to already adapt before we even get into breaking this everything down is that in like every ad breaks at some certain scale, okay? There's no ad that scales unlimitedly high because then otherwise every brand that just finds a winning ad would be at, you know, a million dollars in revenue a day, okay? And the reason that that's not the case is because every single creative caps out at a certain point. So it's like every single creative breaks, but every single creative holds a certain spend. But the problem is a lot of ads are just so bad that they literally like that you can't set the budget that low that they would perform well meaning right what you have to understand is you don't find a winning ad it's not a yes or no black or white type of question it's a question of how good is your ad, okay? And that's what we need to optimize. Meaning, when we look at the entire ad account, you're always going to find ads that specifically do really, really well, but specific metrics of that do very bad. And then also metrics change as you spend a lot of money on it. As you scale, they will break. As they long for a long amount of time, ad fatigue, they break. So there's a million reasons and cases why and when ads will break for you. The mindset that you need to come into this with is that's why we're testing creators in the first place, because we want to outperform Perform the new customer ROAS, the new customer cost per acquisition from beforehand, right? And that's what we want to basically improve on. But keep in mind, creative testing is not there to make you profitable immediately. We just want to figure out which ads not to run, which directions not to go to, and so we find something that's scalable that holds spend, and then we can then iterate on. And so, 80% of the stuff that's going into the ad account is going to be iterations that I'm going to break down in a second. And the iteration is just you launch the test, you buy data, which is what media buying is, you look at the metrics and then based off of those, you retest, okay? And that's what we're going to do. So after you've launched these batches, right, there's basically two cases what could happen. So obviously, I'm a fan of spending money on every single ad, forcing money on every single creative. I know a lot of people try to do, you know, CBO strategies, dynamic creators, whatever. They're really good and I'm saying there's a million ways to get to the end goal. I like to spend money on actual creatives and then call it the creative test, meaning ABO. And so you spend your break you and cost per acquisition upfront, new customer on every single, every single ad, not ad set, ad, right? So if you have five um, ad, yeah, if you have five ads each, uh, each ad set, each batch, then what's going to happen is you're going to spend five times the actual, um, you know, break even cost per acquisition on this whole ad set, which is completely normal and you should always be ready to invest that kind of money. And then you're going to look at this metric here, right? Which is the cost per ad to cart, my personal favorite metric. It actually tells you, it actually does tell you a lot more than just the ROAS, right? It actually predicts the ROAS very early on, how it's going to be and how much spend it also is going to be able to hold. But also it oftentimes even predicts the LTV, which is super crazy. So the cost per ad to cart, currently honestly my favorite metric and you can just directly implement this into your ad account, look at it immediately. And so what you do then is any ad concept, any ad specifically, any creative that has a high cost per ad to cart, high meaning it's higher than a third of your ideal cost per purchase, you just move on. 
okay? We don't want to iterate bad ads. This is a big misconception. People look at the worst ad and then they iterate it. No, you can't iterate your way out of bad ad. You can't double or triple the, or quadruple the performance of a terrible ad. You just want to move on. We're going to iterate on something which already does show performance. That's the whole point of the iteration process. And so we move on because the low budget is supposed to be the most profitable. We're never going to get this concept better and more profitable. Even if we iterate for years and years and years, it's never going to be a crazy easy winning ad and we can spend so much time and money on it resources towards it it's just not worth it to even try to turn this concept profitable so whatever metric went wrong analyze it right we don't just want to move on and do nothing with it I actually want to understand which exact things led to this uh, concept and this specific ad uh, do bad and, and go wrong and then we want to track it in a separate spreadsheet which is the losing variables so we have one for winning variables and then you have one for losing variables and every single time that you're in this ideation process, right, the creative strategist, what it's going to do, it's essentially going to um, give this huge list of losing variables to ChatGPT, give the ideation in there, the brief in there, and then ask ChatGPT, have I made any mistakes of these ever again? And if yes, you're just able to immediately not make them again, which is a very, very powerful thing if you actually do this properly. And then all you need to do, like I wrote here, you never need to make the same mistakes again. And that's why we want to track want to understand, but we're not going to iterate stuff with a high cost per ad to cart. It's just not worth it and it's not going to work. It's not going to work out well, okay? Now, the stuff with a low cost per ad to cart, and now we're getting to the interesting stuff, right? But you see there's a lot coming up. We don't, I'm not just going to tell you guys to, okay, just scale by 20% every single day, end of the video. No, okay. We're actually going to analyze the weakest metric of the good ad. The good ad, which has a low cost per ad to cart, we're going to analyze the weakest metric. And so on a surface level, we, it can only be these two things. It can either be the CPC or be the conversion rate. What's weaker, right? Now, let's say it is the CPC. Now, if it's the CPC, that's the weakest, weaker metric out of these two, it can actually be the click-through rate or the CPM. But that's still not it. If it's the click-through rate, for example, it can be the hook rate, the 25% video views, the 50% video views, the 75% video views, and then the 100% video views, which is the pitch rate, right? Now, if it's, for example, the con conversion rate out of these two, so CPC and conversion rate, if the weakest metric, the weaker metric, even if both are okay, you just look at the weaker one and then break it down if it's the actual add to cart rate, if it's the initiate checkout rate, if it's the actual drop-off to the conversion rate, what exactly went wrong? We want to understand, even if the ad performs incredibly well, what is the weakest metric? Because we're only going to test iterations on that one thing. This is the very first takeaway that you can take from this video. You have to have to always look at the weakest metric and then iterate on that. Why? Because that's going to have the biggest impact when you fix it. Think about it. Let's say you're, you're let's say, okay, and I'll give you an example, right? Let's say your CPC is terrible. It's like $3, but your conversion rate is unbelievably high, okay? Now, um, let's say, okay, you go one layer deeper and you figure out, okay, well, click-through rate is, for example, it's that's the kind of the, the main problem, right? You figure out click-through rate is like only half a percent, but the CPM is like $50. So the CPM is a little bit higher than it should be, okay? Now, we know though that the that the click through rate is actually weaker. So what we're going to understand and learn from that ad is we're not going to try to iterate the CPM even though it is bad, right? But we're going to iterate the click through rate because if we we'll fix the CPM, we still have a terrible click through rate. And so when we didn't have the highest impact possible. However, if we fix the click through rate first, then obviously let's say we get it up to three percent, we've already six x the performance of the ad. Meaning this is what the main purpose of the ad should be. This is what the goal is. Is we want to take the weakest metrics of the ads that are already working and then iterate on those because we want to op operate on the highest level of impact tests that we can have and that is always going to be the weakest metric right so what exactly to do for every single one of these metrics I'm just gonna literally give you everything every SOP that you can just do and directly implement for into your brand into your creative strategy so Let's say you go down this uh, this rabbit hole. Okay, it's the uh, CPC, it's the click-through rate, it's the hook rate. Cool. Now we ask ourselves: Have we done a hook test prior to this or not? Right. If yes, 
then we're only going to make the iterations on the visual level and on the audio level. If no, then we know that we have to do a content variation. Remember how the hook test was this trash right here before we even got stuff into the ad account. And the reason why is once again, we want to isolate the highest leverage thing, the highest leverage variable in every single ad, which is the content hook, the text hook. Okay, so we ask ourselves, have we done one? If yes, we're gonna make visual variations and audio iterations, okay? So these are the two other variables that could possibly go wrong in a hook. And therefore, they're not grabbing people's attention enough. Meaning, if the text hook content hook performed really well on the hook test, and now the hook, hook rate basically fails, and it's the weakest metric in the entire ad, we know that it has to be one of these two or both of these, okay? If you understand what I'm saying. And then if not, if we haven't done a hook test, then we just need to take a step back and do a retest with changing up the highest leverage thing in every ad, which is the content hook. Okay, so if you do these things, if you follow these steps, you're going to be able to fix your hook rate. It's just gonna be iterations on this weakest metric specifically. Now let's say other example that the weakest metric is the 25% video views. So you have a good hook rate, but it's a terrible drop off to the 25. That All that means, all that tells you is there's no resonance with the problem section of your ad. Okay, so what does that even mean, right? Every ad has after the hook, some type of introduction into the problem, the unique mechanism of the problem, storytelling, or anything that basically trends, like that connects, right? The hook with your actual product, okay? We wanna yap as much as possible and have the softest transition in order to dig the pain, twist the knife, and actually get people to be super, super interested in our stuff. But if the 25% video views was super, super bad, that means there's no one really resonating with that exact section where we want to twist the knife. Meaning, we've talked about the wrong fail solutions. We were way too logical and not emotional enough. We didn't have enough fear of missing out that we have that we created, and we had a too quick transition. So you want to always like make a very smooth transition from every section to the next. And sometimes, if you just very aggressively switch from one topic to the next, and all of a sudden get super salesy, people tend to just scroll away. Okay, so this is what you can learn from this. Now, next example, let's say the 50% video views is the weakest metric right now, right? That means, once again, and this is the main thing, you have a way too aggressive transition. So you went from problem to solution way too quickly and aggressively, right? Because people love buying but hate to be sold. Keep that in mind. If the 75% video views is your weakest metric right now, you literally have no belief to in your ad or not as strong enough. So the three beliefs that you need to understand that you change in every single ad are, first of all, you make people believe that they have a problem, that they think I have a problem. Belief two is that they think whatever I'm trying right now is not going to get me to my goal. It's not, It doesn't work. I have to switch solutions. I'm open towards no solutions. And then belief three is brand XYZ is the best competitor for this. You know what's crazy though? Most people write and copy skip belief two. All they do is do, okay, I have a problem. That's the belief one. And then they skip to belief three, which is brand XYZ is the best competitor. They immediately start praising themselves, their own brand. But they they don't understand that people seeing your ads have massive egos. They think that they're already doing a bunch of things that work, that basically will solve that issue for them. Do you th when, when, think about it. When you've last time watched an ad and they called out a problem that you had, did you think, oh my God, okay, let's buy their product? No, you didn't. You probably were, the first thing what you were thinking to yourself is like, okay, I'm already doing a hundred things to solve this problem. Well, this is Real and this happens in real time. So if you struggle with 75% video views, then you have likely skipped the belief to and people just don't care about you as a brand because they're not open for new solutions and their egos went against you. Okay. So a hundred percent video views, right, is uh telling you that you know you have a very weak call to action, right? So you're just leaving a bunch of clicks on the table because your call to action doesn't convince enough. If the actual weakest metric in your overall ad is is the CPM, then you're targeting the wrong people. Literally, the, all that means is the people, um, it, it's, it's just showing the ad to not the right people that you want to show it to. And so a couple best practices that you can make are a smaller market size, so purposefully niching down on specific hobbies, interests, avatars, meaning, you know, um, ages, demographics, uh, so like, for example, like, like, like ethnicities, you can do specific other countries, maybe you can do everything. You can do genders, right? And 
And then the creative diversity is the second best practice. So obviously trying as many different concepts and saying the same thing in as many different ways as possible, because that is once again, what's going to implement, you know, hitting different audience pockets and therefore optimizing all the CPM. So these things positively influence each other essentially. Okay. If the weakest metric in your ad is the add to cart rate, that means you need more disqualifiers. A disqualifier in an ad is basically something that makes an ad longer and then basically leads to fixing quality problems, meaning it's going to get fewer people onto the funnel. But however, the ones that do click through are actually a lot more warmed up and they buy more, convert more, spend more better quality customers. Okay. So these disqualifiers can be a hook call out in the beginning, a price reveal, an offer reveal, testimonials, stretch benefits, which are long-term benefits, metaphors, objection handling, pain digging, unique mechanism, and so on. Okay. So if your weakest metric right now is the initiate checkout, then I assume that it's going to be a traffic quality issue and people have second thoughts, right? And then what you do essentially from this is you literally just basically ask yourself, have I done this stuff before? Is an ad fatigue very hard to iterate your way out of ad fatigue, by the way, then I would just kill the concept immediately. And if it's second thoughts, then you just have to add more urgency. And pretty much the same thing whenever the actual drop off to the conversion rate is bad. People have trust issues, second thoughts, traffic quality, and you need to add in more urgency. Right. And so this is pretty much it for the entire process, guys. Right. If you follow this and literally just apply what I've told you today and actually stay consistent with this process, you're always you're never going to ask yourself again what to do next. And that was the entire point of this video. Right. I wanted to break down how we do it so that you can do it. And obviously, don't not, never really lack information ever again. Right. Thank you so much for giving me your most important asset, which is your attention. Thank you for watching. I wish you a beautiful day.